Let's take a general look at the user interface. 3ds Max is a Windows application with a title bar and a menu bar that starts with the application menu, followed by Edit, Tools, Group, and ending with Help. All the menus are neatly arranged according to their functionality, such as object creation, modification, animation, rendering, and so on. Right below the menus is the main toolbar, where you can access important basic functions like Move, Rotate, and Scale. This is also where you'll find the Material Editor and the Render dialog, among others. You can access other toolbars by right-clicking an empty gray area of the main toolbar and then choosing the toolbar you want to view. Toolbars can be floating, but you can also dock them to the left, bottom, right, or top of the screen. You can also make a docked toolbar floating again by tearing it out into the viewing area. To close a toolbar, you can click the Close button or right-click an empty gray area of the main toolbar again and disable the option. The next bar down is the Modeling Ribbon, which contains all the tools you need for polygon modeling. These tools are only available when you select an editable polygon object and enter the Modify mode. You can collapse or expand the ribbon, and like the main toolbar, you can drag out the ribbon and dock it in a different location. Let's put it back here for now. The right-hand side of the screen features the command panels. You'll spend a great deal of time there as this is where you can access most of 3ds Max functionality. In fact, many of the commands found in the pull-down menus and modeling ribbon are also in the command panels. There are six command panels in all. Create, Modify, Hierarchy, Motion, Display, and Utilities. Each one has its own set of important features. For now, we'll concentrate on the first two, Create and Modify. As their name implies, the first is used to create geometry and the second to change parameters and modify the shape or aspects of objects. Let's take a quick look at the Create panel. By default, it's set to Geometry, which are objects that have a volume. There are other types of objects, such as 2D splines, lights, cameras, animation helpers, and so on. At the geometry level, you can access additional types of 3D shapes from the drop-down menu. Press C to change the view, and let's create a box. Even though you can see the parameters of this box in the Create panel, it's good practice to always go to the Modify panel to make necessary changes. You can change the box values in a number of ways. For example, you can click in a field and enter a value. You can also click the spinners to change the value incrementally. Or you can drag on the spinners directly. Sometimes a command panel can become too lengthy for the screen resolution available, especially if it contains many different rollouts. This can be seen in the display panel. This panel includes options to hide or show objects, or to freeze objects in case you don't want to select them by mistake. Click any rollout to expand or collapse it. When the information is too lengthy, you can scroll the panel up or down, either by dragging the scroll bar or by placing the cursor in a blank gray area and dragging up or down. You can also click the panel and use the mouse wheel to scroll. To access many rollouts at the same time, you can drag the command panel to the left to give it more room. The working area where you view and modify your scene is obviously very important. We take a closer look at it in the movie entitled Working with Viewports. Right-clicking in the viewport opens the Quad menu, which provides quick access to common commands related to your current selection. You'll find the animation slider bar and the timeline at the bottom of the screen. This area has to do with object animation and also includes buttons for animation modes animation filters, and playback controls. For a closer look, see the animation movie called Using Simple Keyframing. The bottom left portion of the screen contains an area for Mac script users. Transform type-ins are at the bottom center of the screen. You can use these to enter precise X, Y, and Z values, position, orient, or scale a selected object in space. For more information about these, see the movie entitled Transforming Objects.
Finally, in the bottom right portion of the screen, there are two rows of icons for viewport navigation. These are essential for properly viewing the scene, zooming, panning, and orbiting around. See the movie entitled Navigating the Scene.